Chapter 11 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Monster class, I, probably because he was still too weak, Aiden soon went back to sleep. Shi Wei stayed with him in the ward until Kelly, along with Aiden's father, Randy, came back not long after. When Randy saw his child sleeping peacefully, he took a seat on the bedside and stretched out his hand, gently stroking his son's hair. The relationship between this father and son looked very warm, but Shi Wei had a strange intuition that Aiden's parents were certainly not simple. Otherwise, as an Alpha and Omega pair, why would they have Aiden as their only child after so many years? Take Queen Anna and King Trent as an example, as an Alpha, Omega couple with good feelings between them, on average they would have children every two to three years until the Omega's physical condition could no longer bear it. Omegas in estrus had very high chances of becoming pregnant, that was why the five-year-old Shi Wei already had two sisters, Alicia and Shi Lin. It was strange for Randy to only have one son, Aiden. Aiden was an only child, which was unusual in the empire. Although his heart was very confused, Shi Wei also could not ask about other people's family matters directly. He was just a little worried about Aiden's illness, and hoped that Aiden would find the appropriate stem cell match before he reached the age of 14 to thoroughly eradicate this strange blood disease. With Randy there accompanying his son, Shi Wei did not want to disturb them. He silently stood up and walked out of the door with his teacher. Kelly glanced at Shi Wei and could not help saying, You also don't need to worry about your roommate, medical technology is very well developed now, I'm sure there will be a way to solve Aiden's disease. Yes, he nodded and asked, Teacher, the doctor said he had to find stem cells from among his relatives. Can't you find a match from someone else? The probability of matching from a stranger, though very low, was still possible. Shi Wei had heard of a case where a man had found a stranger with suitable stem cells before. And hundreds of years had passed since then, medical technology had become more developed, so the treatment for blood disease should be better than in his last life. Hearing his question, Kelly said regretfully, he would have much better chance if he was a beta, because you can search the whole empire for matching stem cells. But the problem is, Aiden is a scarce omega, so the probability of match success from stranger is particularly low. The best way is for him to have another omega brother or sister. Shi Wei finally understood. In this world, the body structures between alphas, betas, and omegas were very different, so an omega's illnesses would be quite difficult to cure. Even for mere blood transfusions, an omega must receive blood from another omega. If they were given blood from alphas or betas, the pheromones in their body would be disturbed. Kelly saw the child next to her thinking seriously, and reached out to touch his head. She smiled and said, let's go, we should go back. When they both came back into the classroom on the 11th floor, the class was filled with bickering. It looked like the students were arguing about something. A voice in particular could be he heard talking loudly, which reached even Shi Wei's ear through the window, am I wrong? Alphas and betas can work to make money, but Omega's bodies are weak and sick, so they have to stay at home every day. And they need to be taken care of during their adult estrus for at least three days, isn't that troublesome? Carlo, don't talk nonsense, protecting Omegas is our responsibility, don't you want to marry an Omega when you grow up? Yes, aren't you born from an Omega? You are wrong to think so, just see later, once you grow up you will definitely jump over an Omega. You will love an Omega in the future, and love them very much, then you will regret what you said today. The children were very noisy and it seemed like the classmate called Carlo was being besieged by a group of Alpha children around him. The curious Shi Wei pushed the door to see the situation, and found Carlo surrounded by a group of Alphas, but he did not seem phased, and instead stayed straight-faced while saying things like, Anyway, what I said makes sense, Omegas are troublesome, no matter what you say, I insist on my opinion. The child is still young, and yet his temper is very stubborn. Carlo was about to start another argument, but was interrupted by a crisp voice from the classroom's doorway, Classmate Carlo is right ah, Omegas are really troublesome. The crowd simultaneously turned around and saw the first prince Shi Wei standing at the door. 
Shi Wei swept his gaze at them, smiled and said, I don't want to be an Omega, it's really too troublesome. Everyone. Dot. The whole class instantly fell silent. Kelly, who stood at the door, just felt a headache coming, where did all these children come from? To prevent the atmosphere of the class from becoming even more crooked, Kelly immediately coughed, and put on a serious dot teacher facade. She walked to the podium, and said. Student Aiden fainted due to heatstroke and was temporarily sent to the infirmary. We can rest assured that he is all right now. Let's continue our class, we will first elect a class president. Raise your right hand if you want to be the class's monitor. Carlo raised his right hand positively and said seriously, Teacher, I want to be the class's monitor. Kelly asked, Is there any more? Another child stood up. Teacher, me too. I want to as well. Me. The alphas were scrambling to stand up. Alpha children were very competitive, this was in their nature to conquest when facing troubles. Those who wanted to be the strongest one, who wanted to make others listen to their own words, must have very competitive streak in their blood. There was one exception for this, Claire, of course. The just.woke.up Claire completely ignored the competition happened around him, and simply smiled and waved to Shi Wei, inviting the Omega to sit with him. Shi Wei went to his original seat and asked, aren't you running for class president? Claire said, no, Shi Wei was puzzled, why? You're an alpha too. Claire felt embarrassed and scratched his head, I had the lowest score on the test, they will not pick me. Dot. Apparently he is quite self-aware. Shi Wei looked at the strange dot-looking hair in front of him, that golden head looked very dazzling under the glare of the sun, and his as dot clear dot as dot the dot sky eyes radiating innocence only belonging to children. To sum it up in one sentence. This boy looks really lovely, but is a bit stupid. Claire had no idea that he had left an, is stupid a little, impression in Shi Wei's heart. He looked at Shi Wei and said, and Aiden. Is he awake? Shi Wei said, yes, he is all right, his father is accompanying him now. Claire then asked, do you care about him? Shi Wei said, he is my roommate, and he has poor health too, of course I care about him. Claire looked helplessly at Shi Wei, then what about me? I grew up with you, and my body is not well, you should care more about me. Shi Wei looked funnily at him, why, are you in bad health? Claire said earnestly, I often have nightmares. Dot go away. Having nightmares is considered as poor health. What's the logic? Shi Wei didn't bother to pay him any more heed, while the lost Claire thought. Don't you care that I have nightmares? Nightmares are scary too. During their chat, the class president's campaign had started. Teacher Kelly collected the data of the campaigning students, then explained, everyone start voting, each one of you choose the name of the classmate you support. This person will be the class president selected by us all, so I hope everyone will vote earnestly and not abstain. There were too many people running for class president, so the teacher arranged to vote democratically. There was an optical computer on each desk that connected to the podium. The names of the candidates were listed there, and the students who wanted to vote just had to choose, press submit, and the big screen on the podium would soon announce the results of the vote. Carlo. It was amazing that the one with the highest votes was actually Carlo. Shi Wei was quick to understand the reason for this result, the alphas were competing with each other, so they chose Carlo as the safest option, anyway, Carlo and other alphas quarreled before, he won't be selected. There was no beta running for the class president, and since today was the first time the students met, they were still not familiar with each other, so they voted blindly. Carlo, this classmate, had left quite an impression, so he harvested a lot of beta passer.by votes. 5.year.old children would not think too much when voting, most of them could not even remember the names of other students, it was a given for them to pick the most familiar name. As a result, out of 35 people in the class, Carlo actually got 18 votes, more than half. Although Kelly was very surprised, but as a teacher she couldn't go back on her words and had to say. 
Everyone, the election result winner is student Carlo. Carlo immediately stood up and said seriously, thank you for your support. A group of Alpha children glared at him angrily. Kelly smiled and said, that's the decision, and starting today our class president will be Carlo Burke. If you have any problem you can find the class president, or directly come to me. Carlo, help me to distribute these miniature optical computers to your classmates. These miniature optical computers will be bound with everyone's respective study number and fingerprint. You can use it to submit your future homework, so remember to take good care of it, students. Carlo went to the podium to help Mrs. Kelly. They distributed them together, with each person responsible for one side, be it left or right. Although this boy had a strange view, always with, omegas are very troublesome, hanging on the tip of his tongue, but his work etiquette was quite reliable. While helping the teacher distribute the optical computers, he also dutifully checked the name of each classmate, and helped them to complete the fingerprint binding. Soon, it was Shi Wei's turn. After finishing the fingerprint binding with one of the optical computer, he said, you can leave Aiden's with me too, I'll give it to him in our dormitory. Carlo looked up at Shi Wei, and couldn't help asking, is that Aiden better? Shi Wei asked, don't you think Omegas are very troublesome? He's an Omega, why do you care how he is? Carlo said seriously, I am the class president, of course I have to care about the students. Shi Wei smiled, fine, then later after school, you can go to the infirmary with me, and carry him back to the dormitory. Carlo startled, M. Me carrying him. Shi Wei smiled very happily, you are the class president, of course you have to carry your sick classmate. Carlo. Dot. Being refuted by his own words, Carlo's face was sour. Shi Wei actually did this on purpose. As he said, Omegas are really troublesome. Most Omegas needed more care from childhood, their mortality rate was also very high, and once they finally reached adulthood, they would still need people to care for them during their estrus. Yes, it was troublesome, but it's not like the Omegas asked to have these troubles. These troubles were innate, and the Omegas should be the ones who disliked them the most, not some ignorant Alphas. You were born as strong and healthy Alphas, what qualifications do you have to hate on Omegas? Carlo's contempt for Omegas made Shi Wei feel very unhappy. And Shi Wei decided to teach a lesson to this wonderful Alpha. Proof read by Clipart T slash N. I'm well aware that the children in this story act way too mature for their age. In my opinion, this happened because all of them are children from prominent families and have received education in etiquette and basic knowledge from an early age. Not to mention, they were also tutored daily for two years, from three to five Y. O. And yes, even with those reasons, I still think the way they act is too mature for their age. I'll just go ahead and give a classic counter here. This is fiction, some things are bound to be unrealistic. I still like the story despite its flaws, and if you think you can overlook it as well, then, hop on and join me in witnessing Shi Wei and Claire's journey. Grinning Face Chapter 12 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Monster Class, 2, Carlos, Omega, concept was actually very common among adult alphas. Although on the surface it appeared that alphas would protect and take care of their own omegas, but many of them actually did not respect omegas, and the more extreme alphas even thought of their omegas as pets. This idea of Carlos needed to be corrected as soon as possible, at the very least to ensure that the omega he married in the future would not lead too difficult of a life. Otherwise, whichever omega had the luck to meet him, would have to suffer a lifetime of hardship, this was why Shi Wei wanted to teach him a lesson. After all the optical computers were distributed, Teacher Kelly once again read St. Paul Academy's rules to the students, and then the first class meeting was finally over. Kelly let the students head back to the dormitory by themselves. Shi Wei called Carlo to visit Aiden in the infirmary together, and Claire, of course, followed behind them. When the trio arrived at the infirmary, Randy was sitting by the bedside and Aiden was awake. The father and son were whispering with each other, with Randy having a very gentle smile on his face. 
When Aiden saw the three students, he immediately waved and said, Shi Wei, is the class over? He was not too familiar with the other two students, so he did not greet them, and focused solely on Shi Wei. Shi Wei smiled and walked over. He took hold of Aiden's hand and said, It's over. How are you feeling? Are you better? Aiden nodded, Much better. I brought your optical computer with me. By the way, the class president arranged by teacher Kelly is also here to see you. As he said this, Shi Wei looked back at Carlo behind him, class president, aren't you going to say hello to Aiden? Carlo was stunned, because Aiden's pale skin on the white hospital sheets looked nearly the same. He seemed very weak, with the four needle in the back of his hand sending red blood slowly into his body. This week Omega, he looked as if he might disappear at any time. Hearing Shi Wei's words, Aiden curiously looked over. His eyes were very clear, and Carlo could even see his own face projected in them. Then, the boy's eyes curled up slightly as he smiled very cutely, and asked, You are our class president. Carlo's mind finally returned back to reality. He pretended to be calm and said, Hello, I am the class president, my name is Carlo Burke. Aiden asked, Are you the one who has the highest score in the test? That Carlo. Carlo answered, Yes. Aiden said, You are really amazing. Carlo. Dot. It was strange to be praised by an Omega, and Carlo felt uneasy, especially when those clear eyes of Aiden's fell on him. Hearing this conversation, Randy got up from his seat, smiled and said, Student Carlo, my son's body is not very good, so please take care of him more in the future. Since he had been chosen as the class president, Carlo was very responsible with his duties. He immediately looked up and said seriously, Of course, you can be rest assured, sir. During that time, the doctor suddenly came in and examined Aiden's body, then said to Randy, Mr. Randy, your son's physical condition is still stable, but you still have to pay attention to him. He can't be too tired, and can't bask in the sun for too long as well. The medicine I'm giving him will have to be eaten on time every day, and he has to come back here every weekend to do a comprehensive medical examination. Randy nodded, thank you, doctor. He will be discharged after the transfusion of this bag of blood is finished. You come with me to get the medicine. Randy soon came back with the doctor, and patiently explained the prescribed dose of his medication to Aiden. Aiden shook his father's hand, saying softly, Dad, I've got it. You can go home first if you are busy. I have Shi Wei here, I'll be fine going back to the dormitory with him after the transfusion. Aiden obviously really trusted Shi Wei. Shi Wei also convinced him, Uncle rest assured, I will take Aiden back to the dormitory. Randy nodded, smiled and rubbed his son's hair, before turning and walked away. The blood bag was soon emptied, and the doctor came to unplug the infusion needles. Aiden rubbed on his stiff wrist, and said, let's go back. Shi Wei walked to help him get out of bed, and whispered a few words in his ear at the same time. Aiden's expression seemed surprised at first, but he then nodded and the two Omegas exchanged smiles, making Carlo and Claire looked at each other. Aiden was about to put on his shoes, when Shi Wei said, Aiden, the doctor said you can't be too tired, but it's a long way between here to the dormitory, and you will also have to climb several flights of stairs, what to do? And then, he looked back to Carlo, class president, don't you think taking care of the students is your responsibility? Carlo. Dot. Shi Wei smiled, you carry him back. Carlo was silent for a moment, but finally said, okay, after seeing the two Omegas looking at him. The class president's expression was stiff as he squatted down in front Aiden, and Shi Wei tried hard to hold back his laughter. Seeing this, Aiden walked over to the class president's back, and said, Thank you, president. You are welcome. Carlo stood up with Aiden on his back, and found out that this Omega's weight is very light. The arms wrapped around his neck were also particularly thin, and those thin wrists were as white as one dot of dot a dot kind jade. 
There were needle traces on the back of his hand left behind by the blood transfusion for, and the sight of them would be enough to make other people worried. Aiden's breath gently brushed against Carlo's ear, giving the Alpha a very strange feeling. This Omega on his back, with just little bit of force he might be able to kill him, that faint heartbeat of his seemed like it could stop any time. However this person was very much alive, just like him. Although he might look small and weak, he was still breathing gently, just like him. Seeing Carlo stood in a daze, Shi Wei was impatient, class president, you can't even carry an omega. On Carlo's back, Aiden was also puzzled, you can't move. I'm not heavy. Carlo's face suddenly turned red, he said loudly, I'm moving. Then he took up Aiden and walked quickly. Aiden immediately said, You, walk slowly, I feel dizzy. Carlo. Dot. Omegas are troublesome. Claire had been silent during all this time, he was probably the weakest Alpha Shi Wei had ever seen. Shi Wei was about to talk to Aiden, all too happy to ignore Claire, but stopped when he realized that their group was missing one person. He looked back and found Claire hiding behind the sofa, his face pale, and he looked as if he was going to faint. Dot. Shi Wei looked at him in astonishment, what's wrong with you? You look the same as Aiden, don't tell me you're going to faint too. I am afraid of blood, said the pale dot looking Claire. Shi Wei. Dot. Claire came and held on to Shi Wei's hand. The child's hand was dripping with cold sweat, he was obviously truly afraid, there was lot of blood, I fear blood, Shi Wei. Shi Wei rolled his eyes and said, you want me to carry you. Claire looked at him eagerly, and held out his hand to Shi Wei's neck, can I? Your strength is so strong, carry me back. Shi Wei pushed at his head bluntly, go away. An alpha being carried by an omega, aren't you afraid of being laughed at? Claire lowered his head in dismay, I grew up very afraid of blood. Shi Wei rubbed the boy's big golden head helplessly, it's fine, Aiden's blood transfusion has finished. Just rest for a while, we'll go later. Claire sat on the couch, looking very pale, apparently he was stimulated by Aiden's blood transfusion. Shi Wei felt a bit doubtful. This fear of dot blood condition had nothing to do with courage, but more like a mental disorder, just like some people were extremely afraid of snakes. But those people who were extremely afraid of snakes usually developed this condition because they had been bitten by snakes before. It was the same with this fear dot of dot blood condition, some people who had this usually had experienced some things that left psychological shadow in their life, which led to them being nausea and even syncope at the sight of blood. The reason for Claire's fear of blood was not exactly clear, but Shi Wei grew up with him, and had also learned a lot about Claire's childhood from Mrs. Grace's mouth. The golden hired boy was born with severe anemia, experienced a rescue at birth, and often had nightmares before the age of three, maybe this is the cause of his abnormal reaction to blood. Shi Wei stayed with him until his face became a little better, then asked, feel better. Claire nodded, much better. Shi Wei smiled and said, then let's go back. Claire tried to stand up, and Shi Wei was quick to hold him, be careful. Truthfully, Claire had not felt dizzy since a while long ago, but as he saw Shi Wei taking the initiative to help him, his heart was filled with happiness, and he couldn't help but pretend to be weak. Claire leaned his body on Shi Wei's and held on to the other boy's hand, saying, I am really sorry. That you have to help me to go. Looking at his pitiful appearance, Shi Wei also had no choice but to helplessly help him. Claire tightened his hold on Shi Wei's hand, it was rare for Shi Wei not to shake him off. Claire was delighted to find that he had finally mastered the way to make Shi Wei act soft toward him, by faking illness. The two of them walked down the stairs together, and saw the stiff dot-faced Carlo waiting for them downstairs, with Aiden still draped on his back. Shi Wei smiled, President, why are you still here? Noel.N. Aiden said he forgot his dorm number and asked me to wait for you, Carlo answered. Shi Wei said, our dormitory room number is 8511, should be the 8th building's 5th floor. Claire had wanted to say it was number 7th, 
but Shi Wei glanced at him, and Claire immediately closed his mouth. Carlo wondered, Building 8th, Claire, don't we live in Building 7th? Claire decisively decided to sacrifice the class president for Shi Wei. He scratched his head and said, I don't remember. Shi Wei said. Aiden and I were assigned to the 8th building. Carlo had never seen them in the dormitory building, so he also didn't know the real situation and thought that maybe Omegas were placed in the 8th building. He nodded, then turned and carried Aiden to the 8th building. As he struggled to climb to the 5th floor of building 8, Shi Wei pretended to take out his student card and brushed it to the dormitory's door. The door did not open, and Shi Wei immediately turned to him, saying, Sorry, I remembered wrong, I think we live in the 7th building. As you know, an Omega's memory is generally not too good. Carlo. Dot. Although building 7th and 8th were only one number apart, but there was a whole big playground separating them. Looking at Shi Wei's innocent eyes, Carlo had to suppress his impulse to pinch, punch. Him to death. He turned and carried Aiden downstairs. Along the way, there were a lot of students who casted curious gazes at the four of them, especially at Carlo. Seeing an Alpha carrying an Omega through the big playground, a few senior students started whispering among themselves, which made Carlo felt very uncomfortable. On the other hand, Claire was half leaning very frankly on Shi Wei's body, he was secretly very happy to be able to walk while holding hands with Shi Wei. After Carlo carried Aiden to the fifth floor of Building 7, Shi Wei finally opened the eleven dormitories door, and said. We are here. Carlo squatted down with an expressionless face and put Aiden on the ground. Aiden smiled and said, Thank you, class president. You are welcome, Carlo's face was still very stiff, and he was sweating profusely until even his clothes were soaked, although Aiden was not heavy, but having carried this Omega up and down the stairs repeatedly, he was also tired. After they entered their room, Shi Wei stroked Aiden's head and praised, good acting. Aiden was feeling slightly guilty, and said, maybe we are being a bit too much. He carried me for so long, and I could actually feel how tired he was. Don't worry, alphas have good strength by nature, and it's not like he was tired to death. Shi Wei waved his hand and smiled, don't be soft-hearted to him, this fellow simply despises and looks down on us Omega, so we have to make him suffer a little. Proof. Read by. Cleapart my quota for RG this week is done, yay. Zero slash also, if you are reading my another project, Undead, and are waiting for an update, just know that I am stockpiling. Don't really feel like doing weekly update for that one pouting face it's not dropped in any way. Chapter 13 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Monster Class, 3, that night, Shi Wei suddenly received a communication notification from Uncle Berg. Before Berg married, during his childhood, he had given Shi Wei a mini optical computer as a way to contact him. Seeing this notification, Shi Wei was very happy and immediately clicked connect, Uncle, long time no see. Berg was still the same as before. Currently, he was sitting beside the bed while wearing comfortable home clothes. He smiled as he saw Shi Wei and said, have you become used to your new school? Today is the beginning of the school year, the school conditions are very good. Shi Wei remembered someone's name and suddenly asked, Uncle, do you know Carlo? Berg had yet to speak, when suddenly a man appeared behind him. The man had a great and muscled stature, and looked very honest as he asked curiously, Carlo. What's wrong with that brat? I'm talking to Shi Wei, why are you butting in? Berg looked back at him. Dot. The man scratched his head and smiled very innocently. Shi Wei immediately judged that the man must be Drew Burke, heir to the Burke family, and also the Alpha who had married Uncle Berg. Since Carlo was also surnamed Burke, they certainly shared a blood relationship, this was the reason Shi Wei asked about Carlo. I haven't seen Carlo, but I know the kid. Berg looked back at the man next to him. Your nephew Carlo went to school this year, too, right? Yes, he just reached the age of admission and went to St. Paul's Academy. Drew said, Carlo was born with a very high mental strength, 
and since an early age he had grown stronger than other kids his age. I also heard he placed first in the school's entrance examination. Why, did he get into trouble at school? Shi Wei said, no, the teacher elected him as our class president. I heard he is from the Burke family, so I want to ask uncle whether he recognized him. He is my nephew. Drew said, are you the first prince? Your uncle often tells me about you. You are really cute ah, your eyes look just like your royal uncle. The man had not finished talking, and Berg already drove him away, you go out first, I still have something to say to Shi Wei. Oh. The innocent Drew immediately went out. After he left, Berg finally recovered his smile, and said seriously, Shi Wei, I'm contacting you today because of His Majesty the King, he wants me to tell you something. Most of the students in St. Paul Academy are children from military families. Although you are young, you still have to remember your identity as the first prince. When making friends, you have to pay attention to their family background. In addition to the Burke family, you can also befriend the Basie family, but other families like the Orlando family, the Charmin family, the Stoker family, etc., you shouldn't get too close to them, it is not good for you. Shi Wei was surprised, his father asked Uncle Berg to tell him all these probably because the relationship between the royal family and those families were not good. There must be conflict of interests involved, and so Shi Wei, as the Frist Prince, must be clear of his own position. Seeing Shi Wei listening seriously to him, Berg continued, By the way, when you were born I gave you a necklace, did you bring it with you to school? The blue one. I've been wearing it all the time. Shi Wei said, pulling out a blue dot pendant necklace from under his collar. Berg saw the oval dot shaped, fluorescent blue crystal flashing at Shi Wei's chest, smiled, and said, This necklace is said to bring good luck to the owner, you have to take good care of it. Yes, uncle. Shi Wei promised readily, and then asked, Uncle, how are you after getting married? Berg answered calmly, I'm fine, I am pregnant now, at this time next year you may have a little cousin. Shi Wei. Dot. Looking at the man on the screen saying, I'm pregnant, very calmly, Shi Wei automatically thought of the process of being marked by an alpha, and immediately felt goosebumps crawling all over his body, living in this wonderful world, the pressure is really too big uh, probably because of the rapid evolution of human beings, the children of the empire are generally precocious, especially alphas. They already had the courage and motivation to compete with each other from the very first day of school. There were two courses during the first school day morning. Vocabulary and grammar for two class periods, and mathematics for another two periods. Since the children had already studied addition and subtraction until the hundreds with their own tutors before entering formal school, the teacher started teaching addition and subtraction for three-dot-digit numbers directly, along with the basics of multiplication and division, the imperial education was about three years ahead of Shi Wei's current course. Of course, these lessons were too simple for Shi Wei. He pretended to listen attentively, while actually reading his own book with his optical computer. In contrast to him, Aiden studied very carefully, diligently taking notes in his optical computer while listening to the lecture. In the row in front of them, Claire was lying with his head on the table, fast asleep. The teacher could not see it, and called out to him. Student Claire, you answer this question. The optical computer on the teacher's podium showed the map of the entire classroom, so even though it was only the first day, the teacher was able to accurately call out Claire's name. However, the called-on boy did not hear it, still asleep. Shi Wei had no choice but to stretch his feet, and gently kicked his ass. Claire was awakened, he stumbled to stand up and asked. Shi Wei, are you looking for me? Dot. You pig teammate, one. I'm helping you, and you did not even hesitate to sell me out. The teacher pushed his glasses up and said with a dull face, Shi Wei, you answer. Shi Wei stood up helplessly and said. The answer is 137. The teacher pressed the next question option and a new question appeared on the podium screen. Shi Wei answered once again, the answer is 522. Dot. 
Shi Wei responded calmly and answered ten questions in a row until finally the teacher's mood improved. He smiled and let him go, Shi Wei answered well, clearly he has been listening seriously. Claire, you have to learn more from Shi Wei, don't sleep in class. Claire scratched his head, I know, teacher. Sit down. After the two had sat down, Aiden gave a thumbs up to Shi Wei beside him and said, You are amazing, you learn so fast. Shi Wei smiled at him, In the future, if you don't understand something, you can ask me. Aiden nodded, Yes. There are a few things that I don't understand, I will ask you again once we go back to the dorm. Meanwhile, Carlo looked back at Shi Wei, and his expression seemed to say, What is so amazing? I can answer it too. Morning class soon ended. Shi Wei and Aiden went to lunch, Claire tailed behind Shi Wei, and Carlo went together with Claire. After the four children sat down in the school cafeteria, Shi Wei couldn't help asking. Claire, why are you always sleeping now? Claire said, I don't know, I've always loved sleeping. If you sleep in class, the teacher will be calling you to answer questions every day, Shi Wei pointed out. Claire was also very upset, he scratched his head, face confused as he said. There is actually something strange that I've never told anyone. Aiden and Carlo immediately perked up their ears curiously. Shi Wei, you come to me tonight, I will only tell you, okay? Carlo. Dot. Aiden. Dot. People who like to leave other people with cliffhangers are too annoying, Carlo and Aiden concluded at the same time. Shi Wei smiled, you still have a secret. Fine, I'll visit you tonight. In the evening, Shi Wei was back in his dormitory to sort out what they had learned today while also occasionally giving studying tips to Aiden. The sky was already dark when Shi Wei remembered Claire wanted to tell him something. He went out and walked to room 17 before knocking on the door. The door was opened by Carlo, which surprised Shi Wei, are you roommates with Claire? Bed Odin and Carlo nodded and turned back, Claire, Shi Wei is here looking for you. A golden big head soon came out, which instantly became flourished with a brilliant smile as he saw Shi Wei, let's go. Shi Wei wondered, not here. Claire said, a secret has to be said in a secret place, otherwise Carlo will eavesdrop. Carlo. The class president who had intended to eavesdrop shut the door with a sour face. Claire smiled, took the initiative to take Shi Wei's hand and said, let's go. This guy seemed to like holding his hand, making Shi Wei felt very awkward. He wanted to throw him off, but his heart softened once he looked at the simple happy smile on the face of this beautiful blonde-haired child in front of him, he was still a child after all, holding hands must also be part of his childish nature. Since he trusts me, and even wants to tell me his secrets, this has to be the only reason, right? Thinking so, Shi Wei let the other boy hold his hand, and followed him all the way to behind the school's dormitory building. There was a forest there, filled with silvery white tress with leaves that shone brightly under the moonlight, making whoever looks at them felt like they were in dreamland. Shi Wei did not know there was such a beautiful place in the school. Most of the information he usually sought after was about the empire's regime, military departments, and history, while he didn't really pay much attention to plants and animals. This was his first time seeing this silvery tree, so he asked, what tree is this? This tree is called a five-dot star fruit tree, said Claire. The first day I came to school I happened to pass by here, isn't it pretty? Those large silvery trees were indeed really beautiful. Shi Wei could not help but appreciate the beauty of this strange tree, five dot star fruit trees have straight trunks, the leaves are very dense, large oval dot shaped silver leaves closely bundling together. The moonlight above covered all of them, but because the leaves glowed, although it was night time, the forest was as bright as day. While walking in the forest, Shi Wei couldn't help but feel funny, Claire this guy, I do not really know what he is think ing in his head. He said he wanted to tell me a secret but brought me to see this beautiful view instead. They walked all the way to the depths of the forest before Claire finally stopped. He watched Shi Wei seriously and said, Shi Wei, if I tell you the secret, 
please don't dislike me. The boy seemed very afraid of being disliked, Shi Wei answered him calmly with a smile, just say it quickly, I promise I won't dislike you. Claire hesitated for a moment before saying, I feel sick. Dot. This guy's grammar sucks, his words can easily lead to ambiguity. Shi Wei fell silent for a moment, before taking the initiative to ask, are you talking about your fear of blood? Claire shook his head, not the faint that when dot seeing dot blood problem. I often have nightmares. Shi Wei wondered, it's just a nightmare, don't you feel well after waking up? Claire's face turned a bit ugly, he said seriously, I think I always become another person in the dream. I can see him with a lot of strange things, he has his own parents, and many friends. Every time I fall asleep, I become him. The more he heard, the more Shi Wei felt wary, his expression also couldn't help turning serious, your dream content feels very real. Yes, like it really happened. And all of those daily dreams can be connected. For example, yesterday I dreamed he was eating dinner and was awakened halfway, and today I continued dreaming about him eating the rest of the meal. The things I dream every day are connected, as if he was growing up with me. Cried Claire while grabbing onto Shi Wei's hand nervously, I feel scared, Shi Wei, what if one day I fall asleep and completely become him, never waking up again. Shi Wei also felt worry after listening to him. According to Claire's story, his situation seems like a case of dual personality. It is said that a person with a dual personality would sometimes unconsciously turn themselves into another person, and they often couldn't control this other self of theirs, as if they were only looking through a dream. In serious cases, people with dual personality generally has criminal tendency, when they became their other personality, it was easy for them to release the negative emotions suppressed in their heart, and they would even kill or do arson without hesitation. It seemed like Claire's nightmare was much worse than Lady Grace's description. Shi Wei could not help but say, did you not tell your parents about this? Claire lowered his head in frustration, I can't tell them, I'm afraid they will treat me like a monster. No wonder he couldn't say it, to dream of becoming another person every day, children who experienced this strange thing would of course feel scared. Looking at the boy's pale face, Shi Wei reached out his hand and gently touched his head in comfort, Claire, don't be afraid, tomorrow we'll look for a doctor in the school. Tell this situation clearly to the doctor. You'll be fine with a doctor's help. Claire paused for a moment before nodding his head and said with a clenched hand, will you ignore me if I am really sick? Shi Wei smiled, no, no matter what, you are still Claire. Claire felt moved but he didn't know how to express it. He thought carefully, and then extended his arms to hug Shi Wei while saying seriously, Shi Wei you are really nice. Being embraced by a child, Shi Wei was very awkward, but he did not have the heart to push Claire and hugged him back instead. Shi Wei reached out and rubbed his hand on Kyle's golden head, saying, don't worry, I'm here. This was the work of Shi Wei's principle to protect the weaker ones. Plus, the two of them grew up together, Shi Wei really did not want to see Claire suffer from schizophrenia. Had he known Claire would later grow up to be so crooked, he would never have comforted this child actor. Proof. Read by Clepart. Chapter 14 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Memory Fragments A. That night, Claire had a very strange dream. In the dream, he saw his other self grow up quickly and become a slender young man. The young man looked very handsome, wearing a white tailored suit while standing in front of the mirror with a smile. He then sat in a strange car and went to a company. All people in the company greeted him politely as he arrived, calling him. As soon as the name was blurted out, Claire felt the whole world shook and he suddenly opened his eyes. Carlo's serious face was magnified before him, shaking his shoulder with his hand. Claire, get up soon, don't be late. Claire stayed frozen a long time after the escape from his dream. That dream was too real. He lived in a completely different place from home. The white car he used to go out was not the same as the suspension car in the Empire. The silver dot-colored building of the company was a building he had never seen before. 
definitely another completely different world. But the horrible thing was, everything in that world is clearly printed in his mind. Even the faces of men and women who greeted him in the company were very clear to him. Even when he woke up from the dream, he always felt like he had experienced all of it himself. Is my illness getting worse? What is the relationship between that person and me? Sometimes he could not even tell whether he was the man in the dream or the present Claire. Carlo saw his roommate sat on the bed in a daze and frowned. He slapped Claire forcefully on the shoulder. You are awake, right? Go to class. Dot. Claire, who was thoroughly awakened after being slapped by the class president, immediately got up to wash his face and brush his teeth. The two rushed to the classroom and arrived at 7.59. The teacher was coming to the classroom soon, so the two boys quickly slipped in from the back door and sat down in their seats. Seeing the gasping look of the two guys in the row in front of him, Shi Wei could tell that they had apparently ran all the way here. He reached out his foot and gently kicked Claire's butt, Claire. Claire turned back and Shi Wei beckoned him closer, which he complied, leaning his head closer to Shi Wei, Shi Wei, you called me. Shi Wei asked in his ear, coming so late, you overslept again. Um. Another nightmare, Claire whispered. I think my illness has become more serious. Shi Wei said, wait for me downstairs in the afternoon and we'll go to the infirmary. Okay. While the couple was whispering privately, Carlo curiously straightened his ears, trying to to eavesdrop. He could not hear anything though, and had no choice but to turn back facing the podium seriously. There are three consecutive periods of imperial history in the morning. The teacher was a man with gray hair and very serious looking face and voice. The focus of this lesson was, the Battle of Isavil. Shi Wei had checked the information about this a long time ago and knew that since the battle human race was divided into two major regimes, the Lacy Empire and the Strandian Federation. The year the battle ended was also the year the empire was founded. However, his classmates were obviously not aware of this historical knowledge. The teacher played a lot of precious video information on the big screen, and the children were watching it with relish, as if they were seeing a movie. Claire's expression was a little ugly though. His dreams were often filled with exploding images, so looking at the war and flame scene on the big screen only gave him a headache. The nerves in his brain felt like they were burning with how uncomfortable he was feeling. Claire simply closed his eyes and laid his head on the table. Shi Wei saw the Alpha sitting in front of him had fallen a leap again, and felt quite helpless in his heart. This class was actually very interesting for children. The old professor's voice was like a movie narration, and the video on the big screen looked almost as spectacular as Star War, a lot of the children under the podium were very happy to see it. Such an interesting history lesson, and Claire still fell asleep, Shi Wei really admired his drowsiness. After school in the afternoon, Shi Wei followed their agreement and brought Claire to the infirmary at the northeast corner of the school. Because St. Paul Academy adopted a fully enclosed education policy, the children lived together in the school and were unable to go home on weekends. Hence, St. Paul's College had a very large infirmary with an independent high-dot-rise building, and employed many specialized doctors to solve the students' medical problems. Shi Wei looked at the signs of the various departments on each door and continued walking until they arrived in front of a door signed as the Psychological Counseling Room on the third floor. Claire looked and took a few step backwards once he saw the words written there. Shi Wei grabbed his hand and pulled him firmly, don't be afraid, you have to find a doctor if you are sick, or you will only get worse. Remembering his perfectly clear dream last night, Claire finally nodded with a pale face, and was dragged by Shi Wei into the psychological counseling room. The female doctor sitting at the desk was very young and beautiful with thick blonde curly hair. When he saw two children coming through the door, she couldn't help asking, students, did you go the wrong place? Young children were less likely to have psychological problems, and it was the first time she saw such young children entering psychological counseling room since she worked in this school. Mia, the doctor, thought the two children in front of her were very lovely, and could not help but stand up and walk to them while asking, 
where do you feel uncomfortable? I'll take you to the right specialist, okay. Shi Wei at pulled Claire's arm and said, speak to the doctor. Claire talked softly, doctor, I often have nightmares. Mia smiled, having a nightmare is not a psychological problem. Many people also have nightmare. Claire said, but my nightmares are very strange, they happen every night and all of them are connected. There is someone in my dream, and he has been with me since I was young, together growing up with me. I am Claire when I'm awake, but when I'm asleep he seems to become me. The more Mia heard, the more she felt something was wrong. If what the child said is true, then it was very serious, this was a typical precursor of schizophrenia. With this in mind, Mia finally smiled and gently touched Claire's head, asking, What's your name? My name is Claire. Don't be afraid, you come in with me and tell me the details of the dream. The lady's smile was very gentle and kind, Claire shyly looked back at Shi Wei. Shi Wei shook his hand and comforted him, Get in, talked with your doctor and I'll be here waiting for you. Claire nodded, turned to the doctor's room and went into the treatment room. It was different from the closed and suppressed hospital space Claire had imagined. On the contrary, the treatment room was very warmly decorated with colorful pictures on the wall. There were also many green plants in the room, and one of them was just blooming with delicate flowers, causing the room's air to be very fresh. Mia designed the psychotherapy room layout like this on purpose to alleviate the pressure on patients, so that the patients can relax and talk more easily with the doctor. Mia took Claire to the couch and prompted him to lie down, saying, Here, Claire, come and relax, close your eyes and listen carefully to me. She smoothly opened a music box, filling the room with a soothing melody. Claire soon felt himself becoming more relaxed. His ears seemed to be caressed by the sound of waves on beach, and he gradually lost his consciousness. It felt as if he had come to a strange world, everyone around him was saying strange words, but he was able to understand what those people meant. Where were you at very beginning of the dream? Seeing the hypnosis was successful, Mia asked softly in Claire's ear. Claire frowned hard to remember, a long while later, he replied. I live in a strange house, a woman would hold me every day to bask in the sun. Later, I seem to have grown up, and was sent to a school, meeting a lot of classmates. Perhaps the psychic hypnosis had lowered the guard of Claire's subconsciousness, making him able to slowly sort out the little fragments in his dream. Those memories, they began to gradually connect together, as the fragments of memory were stitched into a complete picture. Listening to his slow talk, Mia was shocked to find that, this child's dream was another completely different person's life. Is it double personality? However, based on the medical knowledge she possessed, this could not be defined as a double personality. Because Claire was only dreaming, he did not do anything else as another person. In real double personality cases, when someone became their other self, they would involuntarily do something to improve that personality. They'd create another identity and look for new friends to establish their own social circle, while the main personality often wasn't even aware of the second personality's activities. Connections between the different personalities were usually like strangers who didn't know each other. Claire's dreams, which projected a clear circle of another person's life, felt more like a serious brain damage case, with him receiving fragmental pieces of his lost memory. But he was only five years old now, how could there be so many memory fragments appearing in his mind? Mia was feeling more and more confused, and could not help but ask once again, tell me your name, what is your name? Claire. Dot. What do people around you call you? After she asked this, Mia found the brain waves image in her monitor began to fluctuate abnormally. Claire's fists were clenched tightly on his body, his forehead exuded a layer of cold sweat as his hands and feet began to struggle violently. Mia was startled and immediately awakened Claire, 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 L.R.G. The young boy lying down on the sofa suddenly opened his eyes, revealing a pair of clear, bright, as dot blue dot as dot sky, misty eyes. However, when Mia looked into those eyes, she felt chills running down her spine, because at that moment, Claire's sharp eyes were completely unlike a five-year-old child. 
Claire looked at her, then looked back and stared at the white wall in front of him. The suffocating silence lasted for a long time, and Mia deeply regretted her hasty decision of using hypnosis on this child. She actually only meant to use mild hypnosis to make Claire relax and help him to recall the dreams. Supposedly, this kind of mild hypnosis would not cause any negative impact, but then how could Claire feel like an entirely different person after waking up? Mia worriedly reached out to touch the child's head, but to her surprise, Claire stiffly turned his head away from her hand, and then said, Doctor, my situation, can you not tell other students, the teachers, and parents about it? This. Claire said, psychiatrists should be obliged to keep the patient information confidential, right? Psychotherapy was originally confidential, but due to Claire's young age, telling his parents should be the right thing to do. Mia hesitated, and saw the child in front of her showing a simple smile while looking at her with eyes full of trust, I am very scared, and I told you these secrets because I have special trust in Dr. Jijia, so don't tell others, okay? His soft little hands were holding on to Mia's fingers as he said this. Being held by the child softened Mia's heart instantly, and she couldn't help agreeing, fine, I promise not to tell others for now, but you have to come back to the school's hospital this weekend to meet me, I need to make a detailed assessment of your psychological situation. If the result is fine, we don't need to ask your parents to come. Clary nodded, I got it. He stepped down from the seat and Mia took him outside. Seeing them, Shi Wei worriedly stepped forward and asked, How is it? Mia did not speak, Claire answered him, It's fine, not serious. He turned to go as soon as he said this. Shi Wei immediately caught up with him and upon seeing his bad complexion, Shi Wei took initiative to hold his hand as comfort. Claire took his hand back, looked at Shi Wei and said, Don't pull me. I can go by myself. Dot. Is he feeling awkward? Shi Wei patted his head, what's wrong with you? Claire, who felt almost dizzy being touched at his head, glared at Shi Wei, don't pat my head. Shi Wei thought this little guy was pretending to be funny, so he messed up his hair and said, fine, I know you're feeling uncomfortable, don't be moody. Even if you're sick, it can be cured slowly, it will always be cured. Dot. Claire fumed, he ignored Shi Wei and turned away. Shi Wei looked awkwardly at Claire's back, suddenly he had very strange feeling. That's the idiot Claire, right? How does he seem like a different person? Proof. Read by. Cleapart T. N. I'm so happy we reached in this chapter at last. Finally, some progress. Zero. Slash. Chapter 15 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Memory Fragments, 2 With the help of the psychologist Mia's inadvertent hypnosis, Claire was able to connect all the fragments of the dreams he had had since childhood. He finally remembered the name of the man in his dreams, Yu Qianhe. Yu Qianhe was the only son in his family. His father, Yu Xiaodong, ran a large entertainment company. He graduated from college at only 23 years old, but because of his young age his father did not trust him enough to leave the company to him. He did not want to rely on his father, therefore, Yu Qianhe concealed his identity and became a manager through the company's recruitment. As a new recruit, naturally he couldn't take over the first dot rate stars. The company arranged for someone to him to let him learn the ropes, and that person was called Ji Ran. Ji Ran was a not dot so dot famous third dot rate actor who was said to have played only a few cannon fodder in supporting roles since his debut. When Yu Qianhe looked at his information, he couldn't help but feel very disappointed in his heart, this man had been mixed in this field for so many years but still couldn't become an A dot list actor, certainly he was not promising. As a result, Yu Qianhe was pleasantly surprised when he saw Ji Ran, he really looked better than in the photos, he was handsome with a sunny and cheerful personality. He looked so bright when he smiled, yet so serious when he talked, in this entertainment industry, it was rare to see someone as pure as Ji Ran. The final scene in Claire's dream was of a signing event. Ji Ran wrote his name on the contract, gave it back and said, We are the same age, can I call you Qianhe? 
Looking at his dark eyes, Yu Qianhe could not help but smile, you can, pleased, Ji Ran then reached out and shook hands with him, please take care of me in the future. Yu Qianhe said, I am also a newcomer, let's do our best together. That was when Claire was forced awake by Mia. Claire fell into a long silence after he finished receiving these messy fragments of memory. These memories were so real that for a moment he couldn't tell whether he was Yu Qianhe or Claire, but strangely enough he had a weird intuition that he should not tell anyone about it. So, under the pretext psychological problems, Claire asked the doctor to keep his problem confidential for the time being. Claire walked with Shi Wei all the way back to the dorm. Under Carlo's questioning eyes, he then laid down directly on his bed, hoping to continue the story from his previous dream. Sure enough, after falling asleep, another memory of Yu Qianhe appeared in his dream. That summer, Ji Ran received a job as a stand that I N for a first dot line star in fighting scenes. Ji Ran had loved learning martial arts since he was young so his punches were very powerful, his acting using martial arts also went very smoothly. However, the unknown Ji Ran did not get much respect in the cast, after all he was only a substitute. The film director also had very rigorous demands, so even with his martial arts foundation, he still had to react scenes many times. Ji Ran often had to stand under the sun for several hours. Upon seeing him sweating, Yu Qianhe would tell him to rest immediately whenever he had the chance, and gave a towel and mineral water to him. Ji Ran looked up and poured the full bottle of mineral water on his head, before running full dot power to the studio, acting as if he did not feel tired and his whole body was still full of energy. After returning to the dormitory in the evening, Ji Ran expressionlessly rolled up his trousers and applied ointment on his knee. Yu Qianhe looked at the large bruises on his legs and could not help but frown before saying, I'll help you. Ji Ran said with a smile, you don't have to, I'm used to it. Looking at this handsome man bowing his head to seriously deal with the bruises on his legs, like a lonely beast hiding alone in the corner while licking its wounds, at that moment, Yu Qianhe's heart suddenly felt distressed. Is it because as an orphan he is accustomed to treating his own wounds, so he is now so skilled at it? Who knew how many times he had suffered injuries since childhood, there were still traces of small scars on his knee which looked quite shocking. Truthfully, Ji Ran was a serious, hard-working and particularly strong person. The martial arts director made him shoot a dozen times today yet he never complained, even if he was only a substitute, Ji Ran still performed every action carefully, and though he was tired and breathless, his face was always adorned with a sunshine smile. This person should have had a better future, rather than being buried as a third-rate actor. At that moment Yu Qianhe suddenly had a strong desire, he wanted to make Ji Ran become the most sought-after actor. No matter what method he had to use, he must make Ji Ran the most brilliant star in the entertainment industry. Claire, wake up, we are almost late. Carlo shook his roommate hard on the shoulder, forcibly cutting off Claire's dream. Claire opened his eyes and went to the bathroom to wash his face, wondering. What's the meaning behind this story? He wanted to sleep for a year to finish the story, but it was impossible, his dream was always interrupted at a crucial moment. Perhaps the psychologist's hypnosis had made Claire able to find a way to connect to the memory, as if he had found a key to open the door to that strange world. Numerous pieces of memory emerged in his mind like a tide of water, Claire could not help but sleep in class during the day, and sleep particularly deep at night. In just a few days, he gradually remembered everything about Yu Qianhe and Ji Ran. At the age of 24, Ji Ran finally found a chance to join a crew led by a well-known director and start following his dreams. The young director was a friend of Yu's father, he let Ji Ran play a role there because of Yu Qianhe. The crews gathered were some of the biggest names in the industry, an unknown with no dot fame actor like Ji Ran could only play a small role. However, Ji Ran acted very seriously even though there was nothing complicated in his script and the action was also very standard. His part was basically completed in one try with him rarely ever reading the wrong lines. 
Ji Ran's serious attitude and acting talent quickly won the director's appreciation, and he also became friends with many people in the crew. In the evening celebration of the crew's accomplishments, Ji Ran was in a good mood. The drunk him then smiled, held onto Yu Qianha's arm and said, Qianha, I know that the reason I could get this role is definitely because you were helping me, so thank you. Really, the person I want to thank the most is you. Looking at the reddened face of the man in front of him, Yu Qian resisted his urge to bow and kiss his head, instead he hugged his waist gently and said, How are you going to thank me? Treat me to a meal. Ji Ran thought about it then answered, Treating a meal is boring. Better yet. I can teach you to swim. I heard you are a dry duck, one, Yu Qianha's mouth raised up in a smile, he touched Ji Ran's soft hair gently and said, Okay, whatever you want. The drowsy Ji Ran then fell asleep. Looking at this sleeping man in his bosom, Yu Qianha suddenly felt a strange impulse. He wanted to guard this man's life, to protect his sunny smile, to always stay by his side. Yu Qianha's feelings for Ji Ran had changed direction, but Ji Ran only liked girls. Yu Qianha did not hurry with his confession, but quietly drove away all actresses and female reporters who had impure ideas towards Ji Ran. A few years passed and Ji Ran was never once involved in some romance gossips, in addition to Ji Ran's own reluctance to be in relationship with female stars, the most important reason this happened was because of Yu Qianha's presence. No one can get to Ji Ran beyond through that ironclad manager of his. Yu Qianha's strong desire to monopolize Ji Ran became more and more obvious. Ji Ran's daily schedules were all arranged personally by him, and he never left Ji Ran with any time to date women. Many people were aware of this, except for Ji Ran himself who remained oblivious, as a big actor, he only put all his thoughts on acting. L.C. Their next path went very smoothly, in Yu Qianha's full support, Ji Ran continued to take several large movie projects. With his slender stature, handsome appearance, and smile as bright as sunshine, he soon attracted a large number of fans. Ji Ran also successfully squeezed into the ranks of first-rate celebrities, and gained an income more than ten times what it was originally. At the 60th Film Festival, Ji Ran once again won the Best Actor title, at that moment, all the spotlights were cast on him. While holding his hard dot one golden trophy in his hands, he smiled so brilliantly and dazzlingly. I really want to put him into my bosom, and possess him completely, thought Yu Qian who was sitting backstage. However, Yu Qian He did not do anything. Ji Ran had a very tough character, and for Qian He forcing a straight man to bend was not a desirable act. He preferred the boiling frog in warm water way to make Ji Ran like him slowly, it was not like he had a shortage of time. He would also like to take advantage of the vacation opportunity, with Ji Ran more relaxed it would be easier to cultivate his feelings. But who would have guessed that while they were driving to their vacation destination they would actually end up in a car accident, completely putting a stop to all of his plans. When he woke up once again from the dream, Claire had finally sorted through all the memories. He is Yu Qianha otherwise, those memories would not be so clear to him, and his feelings towards Ji Ran would not be so strong. Perhaps because he experienced a serious injury during the car accident, Yu Qianha's memory became messy fragments in his mind. In that tragic car accident, Yu Qianha witnessed with his own eyes the bloody sight of his beloved which stimulated him too much, so after rebirth he would often dream of blood and became dizzy every time he saw blood. His last memory was of the car's explosion. No one could possibly survive in such an explosion, that means Yu Qianha should have died in that car accident, and then reincarnated into the world hundreds of years later. If this was the case, then everything can be explained. June 21st happened to be the day of the car accident. Yu Qianha, who died in a car accident, was reincarnated and became Claire in this world. However, the memory of his past life was divided into fragments, hidden deep in Claire's mind. Today, the psychologist's hypnosis had inadvertently opened the shackles in the depths of his brain, and all the dusty memories were finally awakened. Claire stared at the world around him, and his eyes could not help but turn a bit red. 
so that what about Ji Ran? 1. Dry duck, refers to the ducks which are raised on land and never swim. Almost all the ducks can live in water and can swim, so, is a metaphor for people who can't swim. 2. Boiling frog in warm water, means to slowly increase a stimulus that would otherwise be rejected if performed all at once. This idiom comes from the old legend that said if you put a frog in boiling water it will immediately jump out, but if you put the frog in cold water and then slowly turn up the heat, the frog will eventually get boiled alive. T slash N. So, Ji Rant's manager is called Yu Qianhe and not Yu Qian, sorry for the mistake. I've changed the name in CH1 as well. Proof. Read by. Clipart. Chapter 16 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Memory Fragments, 3, the next day happened to be weekend, and Claire went to the hospital to see Dr. Mia in accordance with their agreed time. Currently, only Shi Wei and the female doctor knew about the dreams, and Shi Wei only knew that Claire had strange dreams. Claire did not tell him about the specific content of the dreams, so he did not need to worry too much about Shi Wei. However, Mia the doctor was not the same. During that hypnosis, Claire temporarily lost his consciousness, he didn't know what else he had told her, so he must find a way to make her continue to keep it a secret. When Mia saw Claire pushing through the door, she immediately took him to the treatment room and asked with concern, Claire, how are you feeling these days? Claire said, much better than before. Mia carefully observed him for a moment before saying, well, let's do a test, you have to fill it out according to the real situation. She gave a questionnaire to Claire, Claire took a closer look at it. It was a typical psychologist questionnaire, used to assess the severity of schizophrenia. If he was given this in the past, Claire would surely fill it out truthfully and the result would definitely come out as a serious case of schizophrenia. Fortunately, he had recovered his memory and was clear on the concept of cause and effect. Claire deliberately filled the form with answers to alleviate his condition, then returned it to Dr. Mia. Mia read the result of his form, obviously relieved, smiled and said, It seems that you have really improved a lot recently, so do you still see that another person in your dream? Claire answered. No, there were no dreams in the last few days. Hearing this, Dr. Mia's worried heart was finally calmed, she smiled and said, you must continue to relax, don't think too much, if you have problems you can come to see me at any time. Clary nodded, I know, thank you, doctor. After coming out of the hospital, Claire went to the school's library. He wanted to find out the whereabouts of G. Ran as soon as possible and the library's data retrieval center was the most convenient way to do it. However, to his disappointment, even after he entered so many keywords. G. Ran, Yu Qianhe, film festivals, car accidents, etc., and searched repeatedly, he still did not find any useful information. It was no surprise though, hundreds of years had passed, humans had long left the earth, how could there be information about a little actor and manager? Did he lose G. Ran before even having the chance to confess his feelings? Originally he thought that they still had a lot of time together, and that there was still a long way for them to go side by side. He had also planned to take a science fiction movie to help open G. Rant's path to the international market, and once G. Rand became tired and wanted to retire from the film industry, they could find a quiet place abroad to spend the rest of their lives together. Who would have guessed that a car accident would shatter everything in mere seconds? The thought of his beloved man dying in the car accident made Claire's heart feel so painful, it was like his chest was being torn apart. His G ran, how could he disappear like this? Meanwhile, upon seeing a pale dot-faced child lying on the table in a daze, a teacher who was patrolling the library could not help but come over, student, are you feeling uncomfortable? Claire. Dot. The child's face revealed a superficial smile as he said, No, I was just reading, teacher, and did not understand some things. The child's smile was particularly cute, and the teacher could not resist reaching out to touch his big golden head, saying, Good. Once the teacher left, Claire wiped the sweat on his forehead and thought depressingly. Now he is still a mere child with short dot arms and legs, cannot behave in too unusual a manner. 
he needed to adapt to his new identity as soon as possible, and look for news of Ji Ran in private. Since I was reborn in this world, perhaps it's also the same with Ji Ran. Was he also born again? As long as there is a glimmer of hope, I cannot give up easily. Claire took a deep breath, got up and left the library. While walking on the school's path, Claire thought of what he should do. He could not try to find Ji Ran publicly, this strange name would definitely make people suspicious, so he could only investigate this privately by himself. Since the two of them died in a car accident together, if they reincarnated together, then their time of birth should be close together. The day of the car accident was June 21, he was born on the same day, so maybe Ji Ran was also born on June 21, but he did not know whether the other guy woke up with his past memories or not. Maybe I should go back and check the data of children who were born on June 21. As he was thinking this, Claire's forehead was suddenly hit by another person's head. Bang, Claire saw stars. When the other boy saw him, he blurted out, Claire, are you sleep dot walking with your head down? Why did you have to bump into my head on such a wide road? Don't you know your head is harder than mine? Claire. Dot. Looking at Shi Wei's eyes, Claire felt very helpless. This childhood sweetheart of his, the one he would always childishly hug and kiss until his face became wet with saliva, these scenes Claire still remembered very clearly. Seeing Shi Wei now was like looking into his own black history, Claire could not help but turn around, intending to go away. Shi Wei suddenly grabbed his back collar, why do you run after hitting me, what's wrong with you these days, have you lost your soul? Claire reluctantly said, let go, Shi Wei. Shi Wei was confused and said, why do I feel like you seem to have changed? Claire turned back and smiled very brightly, no change ah. Shi Wei felt more doubtful, really. But I think your smile looks very fake. How should I smile? Claire adjusted his look, trying to make his smile a little simpler. Seeing the child in front of him attempting to smile even more silly, Shi Wei could not help reaching out and rubbed his head, saying, Stupid, I'm joking with you. Claire. Dot. Facing this black-haired, big-eyed child who had grown up with him, although Claire had recovered his memory and now had an adult's IQ, he did not feel annoyed by little Shi Wei. After all, they had known each other for several years, and this kind of childish scheming was normal for small children, he did not really mean to offend Claire. However, at the sight of Shi Wei's smiling eyes, Claire felt slightly stunned, and he was suddenly hit with a very strange sense of familiarity. Claire could not help but ask, Shi Wei, you and I were born on the same day, right? Shi Wei laughed and patted Claire's golden big head, are you still dreaming ah, uh, silly? We were both born on June 21, the last day of the Gemini constellation. How stupid you are, can't even remember your own birthday. Claire's heartbeat suddenly accelerated, was there a possibility that Shi Wei, the childhood sweetheart born five minutes behind him, was the man he was looking for? They were only five minutes apart during their birth time, and since childhood he had always thought Shi Wei was particularly gracious. When he thought of this, Claire immediately pulled on Shi Wei's hand and asked earnestly, Shi Wei, have you, like me, ever dreamt of some weird things occasionally? Shi Wei said, no, I rarely dream when I sleep. Claire went on to ask, did you ever think that you might be another person or someone who lived in another world? This startled Shi Wei, but he thought that Claire must still be feeling trapped in his dreams, so he wanted to ask the small children around him whether they also had experienced the same situation. Seeing his look of nervousness, Shi Wei patted his shoulder in comfort and said, I never had that kind of weird dream. It's just a dream, don't think of it too much. Really? Not even once? No, answered Shi Wei definitively. Dot feeling disappointed, Claire withdrew his hand and hung down his head, looking very lost. Shi Wei asked, have you seen the doctor? I have, it's not serious, said Claire before turning to leave. Probably because he had spent five years as a child in this world, Claire's heart had long accepted the fact that there were three hidden genders in this world. Alpha, Beta, and Omega, 
and that Omegas could be pregnant. Even if he had recovered the memory of his past life, he did not feel shocked by this world's environment, and just quietly accepted it. Suddenly recalling the memory of his past life, and also remembering the death of his loved one in a car accident, this incident left a huge impact on Claire, causing him to feel very depressed these days. Now the one thing he wanted to do the most was find out whether Ji Ran was still alive. Even if the possibility of finding one person in the boundless sea of people was extremely slim, he would do his utmost best to find the beloved one in his heart. Claire's conclusion was actually very reasonable. The two men died at the same time, so if Ji Ran was really alive, his date of birth should be exactly the same as him. Using the optic computer's search permission his father had left him, Claire searched through online databases for a detailed list of all children in the entire empire who was born on June 21, 1974. The birth rate of the empire had been declining in recent years, but there were still hundreds of children born on June 21, including males and females, with Alpha, Beta and Omega. Many of those children were born in the distant Lyra galaxy and Cigar galaxy, and some in other planets in the Cepheid galaxy. It would not be easy to find out who might carry the soul of Ji Ran from so many people, and besides, what if he really was reincarnated but has no memory of his past life? Claire took a deep breath and carefully screened the search result. To his surprise, he actually found a young boy born on June 21 who had several medical psychology records, the etiology was mild symptoms of schizophrenia which seemed to be related to dreams. Claire's heart skipped a beat. Just as he wanted to carefully check the information of the child, his butt was suddenly kicked. Claire knew it was surely little Shi Wei who had kicked him, he turned and looked helplessly at the boy, what are you doing? Shi Wei said, you, don't always let your mind wander ah, the teacher has been watching you. At this time, the teacher suddenly called, Claire, you answer this question. Claire stood up and looked at the big screen on the podium, completely clueless as to how to answer this question. If it was a simple mathematic question of addition and subtraction, he could use the knowledge learned from his memory to work it out, but this was an imperial history class and the teacher asked about the year the second emperor took over the throne, how should he know? While he was still distressed over how to answer, he suddenly felt a soft touch on the lower part of his waist, it was Shi Wei writing a big letter, using his toe. Claire replied embarrassedly, the answer is A. The teacher nodded and said, sit down, and listen attentively to class. Claire sat down and looked back to Shi Wei. Shi Wei returned his look with a brilliant smile, as if to say, thank me, stupid, I've helped you again. Looking at his triumphant smile, Claire really wanted to beat this little Shi Wei, who sat in the row behind him and was always kicking him every day. T slash N. These are updates for last week quota, so more will be coming sometime this week. Zero slash proof dot read by. Cleapart. Chapter 17 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Time flies, and after recovering his memory Claire was no longer as sleepy as before. He would listen attentively in class, and soon he was able to keep up with the teacher's lectures. The first dot years classes were so simple that Claire could spend his days peacefully. He had been living in this world for five years, so accepting his new environment was not difficult for him. However, the matter of Ji Ran was still an unplugged thorn in his heart. Whenever he thought of that name, he felt like his heart was stabbed by something sharp and prickly. Everything about Ji Ran was crystal clear and memorable in his memory. However, in his past life, he did not even have time to say, I love you, to him, that was the biggest regret he had when he died in that car accident. If he could really find Ji Ran in this world, he vowed he would never let go of that person ever again. Claire took his time checking some information while walking to school. Most of the Empire's children who were born on June 21 lived in other distant galaxies, and gathering their details was certainly no easy task. After spending more than half a year, Claire finally finished collecting detailed information on over 100 children born on June 21, including information about their family circumstances, childhood experiences, personalities and hobbies, etc. 
His attention was first locked on a child who had also gone to a psychologist when he was younger, a beta boy who lived in the capital star of the empire. Coincidentally, the child's home address was not far from Claire's home and his father worked as the battalion commander of General Byron's army, Star Corps. However, the child did not go to St. Paul's Academy, but studied at another school in the capital star. St. Paul's Academy had a closed teaching environment and there was no holidays on weekends, so Claire was unable to leave the school temporarily, he could only wait for the annual holiday after the end of the first year to find those children. Fortunately time flies, and the first academic year was soon coming to an end in the summer. As the final exam was approaching, the students began to review their lessons nervously, except for Claire who was somewhat absent-minded. One day after school, Shi Wei suddenly stopped Claire and said seriously, Claire, why aren't you doing any review? If you fail the exam you will have to repeat the year. The management system at St. Paul Academy was very strict. At the end dot of dot the dot year exam, the full mark for each course was 100 points, while anything less than 70 points was deemed as a fail and those who did not pass must repeat the year. It would be difficult for Claire to explain to his parents if he was held back, and it would also make General Byron lose even more face, so, as his childhood friend, the peacekeeping Shi Wei decided to help him. Shi Wei compiled the notes in his optical computer into a file and showed it to Claire, saying, These are my notes from Imperial History, the class you rarely paid attention to. During the next few days, just recite it every day and I'm sure you'll pass the first exam. Looking at the clear eyes of the little boy in front of him, Claire could not help but smile. He took the optical computer and said, Thanks, Shi Wei. Shi Wei rubbed his head, You're welcome. Claire, whose hair was rubbed until it became messy, said with some frustration, Can you stop rubbing my head all the time? Shi Wei smiled very brightly, Whenever I saw your golden head in front of me. My hands felt itchy ah. Uh. Claire helplessly tried to tidy up his golden hair and changed the subject, it's holiday soon, do you have any plans? Shi Wei answered, I'm going back to the palace of course. I heard that my uncle's child is about to be born and that my mother is also nearing her due date that I would like to go back and have a look at the two little babies. I already have two Omega sisters, so I hope my mother would give birth to an alpha brother this time. He learned the news of his mother's pregnancy from his uncle, it was said that Queen Anna's pregnancy reaction was even stronger than her last two pregnancies with the Omega princesses. Every day, she would vomit until she became lightheaded, and her physical condition was also worsening with each passing day. The doctor worried that she would not be able to give birth to this child successfully. Anna was afraid of disturbing Shi Wei's study, so during this time she rarely did any video calls with Shi Wei. Shi Wei hoped that his mother would give birth to this child safely, and it would be even better if the child was an alpha prince, so she would not have to bear so much pressure anymore. Claire saw the look of worry on Shi Wei's face and comforted him, don't worry, there are so many powerful doctors in the empire, the queen will certainly be fine. Shi Wei nodded his head, yes. Claire said, then I'll go to do some review first. Fighting they both bid farewell at the dormitory's doorway. After Claire entered his room, he opened Shi Wei's imperial history notes and looked seriously at it. As Shi Wei said, he had to at least pass the exam, it would be very troublesome if he had to repeat the year. During this exam dot reviewing time, Claire and Shi Wei also had their birthdays on June 21st. The class teacher Kelly previously had set a rule for everyone. Every time a child in this class had their birthday, the rest of the class must personally make a simple e-dot card as congratulations and send it to the birthday classmate through their optical computer. She arranged this to make the group of children get along more harmoniously. Claire received a lot of e-dot cards on his birthday. Carlo drew the eagle-dot-shaped school badge of San Romeo Military Academy on the card and solemnly wrote the following line, Good luck studying. Once we grow up let's go to this school together. Aiden painted a headshot of Claire on the E-dot card, with two sprouting Meng Meng ears on his head followed by a beautiful handwriting, I wish for the six-year-old Claire to be very happy every day. Happy birthday. There were various E-dot cards sent by children, 
Claire sorted out all of them in his optical computer only to find out there was one missing. He walked to Shi Wei's room and knocked on the door. Shi Wei stuck his head out and asked, What's wrong? Are you looking for me? Claire, where's your greeting card? Shi Wei bent over and laughed, My birthday is also today, if I send you an e-dot card, then you'll also send me an e-dot card, every year we'll have to send one to each other, it's too troublesome. Let's just not give one to each other, the teacher will not know. Claire. Shi Wei continued confidently. Anyway, you haven't finished the card for me, right? Yes. Don't do it, I don't want to do one for you. Uttered Shi Wei while reaching out his hand and patting Claire's shoulder gently, go do some review, don't be held back. Claire actually did not want to do this formalized thing as well, and Shi Wei's idea of mutual exemption coincided with what he had in mind. The exam date was close, there was not much time left. Thinking of this, Claire immediately turned back and went to his room to review his lessons. Shi Wei's notes really helped Claire a lot as the content was explained very clearly. At the annual exam in July, Claire scored 75 points or so in several courses. Although the score was not high, fortunately the clearance limit was 70 points, so at least he did not have to repeat the year. After the test, St. Paul's Academy finally entered the one-month-long vacation period that the students had been looking forward to. Many of the children's parents waited at the school gate, including Randy. Aiden immediately rushed over once he saw Randy and hugged the man's legs happily, Dad. Randy smiled, hugged his son, rubbed his head and said, Hello there, how is your exam? Aiden said, All passed. At this moment, not far from them a row of neat platinum suspension cars suddenly stopped. A man dressed in pure white uniform stepped out of one of them, his expression radiating indifference and as cold as ice. The man looked around before walking to Shi Wei's direction, he bowed and said, Prince, Her Majesty asked me to pick you up. Shi Wei nodded, I know, let's go. The man was Craig, the leader of the Royal Guard. Aiden was a little afraid of Craig and hid instinctively behind his father, Randy immediately picked up his son and turned away. There were so many parents in attendance at the school gate that various suspended vehicles were parked over St. Paul's Academy. The Royal Guard suspension car fleet quickly left by the high lane, Shi Wei who was sitting in the vehicle asked nervously, How is my mother? Craig answered seriously, The Queen's due date is near, and because her body condition is not very good, His Majesty had her sent to the Imperial Hospital in advance. Shi Wei said, Let's go directly to the hospital. I want to see her. When Shi Wei arrived at the hospital, His Majesty was standing in the hallway with a very heavy face. Shi Wei calmly walked up to him, before bowing slightly in salute, Father. Trent nodded and said gravely, Your mother's condition is not very good, the doctor just entered to attempt a rescue. Shi Wei's heart felt tight, he immediately held on to his father's hand and said, She will be fine. Trent squeezed Shi Wei's hand gently, clasping his small hand tightly. The father and son stood side by side in front of the operating room, waiting for the woman who was very important to them to come out of the operating table healthily and safely. Perhaps the prayers they uttered in their heart were useful or perhaps because the central hospital's doctor's level was indeed superb, from the operating room soon came a baby's voice crying loudly, wa wu wu dot wa wa. The surgeon in charge came out of the room, and Trent quickly went up to him and asked, how is Anna? The doctor answered, both mother and child are safe. Trent finally felt relieved, Shi Wei could feel a layer of cold sweat on his palm. The doctor paused, then said, however, the queen's body was severely damaged during the process, and it may be difficult for her to get pregnant again after this child. Trent fell silence for a moment before saying, I understand. Although it was very easy for omegas to conceive, most omegas have a weak body. Childbirth also brought great damage to their body, so an omega could only give birth to a limited number of children in their lifetime. According to the doctor, this may be the last child of His Majesty and the Queen. Shi Wei could not help but feel worried in case the child was not an alpha. The Empire would have no heir then, 
and his father and mother would certainly be very sad. A moment later, the weak Queen Anna was pushed out of the room together with the little prince, Caesar, who had just been born. The little baby was put on a soft stroller, his mouth opened in more cries and both his legs were kicking wildly, seemingly very energetic. After the birth, the expert group responsible for the second gender identification once again came to the hospital with their tools. The gray dot haired Professor Brown drew some blood from the baby, and soon the identification result was out. He said excitedly, Congratulations His Majesty, Congratulations Queen, the result of the appraisal is an alpha prince. Trent and Anna glanced at each other, both showing a happy smile on their faces. Shi Wei remembered the moment of his own birth, at that time His Majesty, who was informed of the appraisal's result, was not very happy. But now, with the birth of Caesar the Alpha Prince, finally His Majesty and the Queen could let some pressure off their shoulders. His father needed an Alpha son to help him with the government, and the Empire also needed an Alpha Prince to inherit the throne, so Shi Wei Kaun fully understand why His Majesty and the Queen were so looking forward to having an Alpha son. However, looking at Caesar who was still crying and kicking his short legs in their father's bosom, Shi Wei could not help feeling a bit worried, as an alpha, his younger brother Caesar would have more responsibilities and burdens than Shi Wei himself. I hope when he grows up, he will not fail to live up to the expectations of father and mother. As a brother, Shi Wei also would do his best to help him. Proof. Read by Clepart. Chapter 18 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Recognition, too, the birth of the Alpha Prince was not only celebrated by His Majesty and the Queen, but it was also good news for the entire empire. That night, the headlines of major news outlets in the empire all covered the birth of the fourth prince. His Majesty Trent also held a banquet in the palace, inviting a number of military officials and friends of the royal family to celebrate this happy event. General Byron and Mrs. Grace were also among those invited, but they attended with their little Omega son, without bringing Claire. As soon as Mrs. Grace came to see Queen Anna in her palace, Shi Wei asked her questioningly, Madam, where is Claire? Grace answered with a smile, he did so bad on the exam so he has to review his lessons at home and can't come tonight. Shi Wei of course, did not believe that that lazy, sleeping that every dot day boy could sit still obediently reading at home. Back to the palace, he directly asked the AI butler to contact Claire, but strangely enough he did not answer. At this moment, Claire was sneaking out from the back door to find someone. He found out that there was a beta boy who was born at June 21 with a record of psychology treatment in the hospital. The boy's experience was very similar with him, so Claire naturally thought that this person might have G. Rant's memory. Because the memory began to awaken, he was mistaken as having schizophrenia and had to go to the hospital. As a result, when he ran to the boy's home, he found out that the boy was totally different from what he had imagined. The boy's father, the battalion commander of the Stars Corps, was guarding Admiral Byron's security in the vicinity of the palace tonight, and the little beta boy was at home with his mom. After Claire knocked on the door, it was opened by the boy. As soon as Claire saw the blonde-haired boy who looked the same as in the database's photo, he asked, Are you Jamie? The boy looked at him with suspicion and asked, How do you know my name? What's your name? Where did you come from? How did you find me? What did you find me for? What school did you study at? I have never seen you at my school. Claire, dot. This boy is actually a chatterbox. He had only asked one question, but was bombarded with a bunch of questions in return, completely unlike G. Rant's character. Claire pressed down the uncomfortable feeling in his heart, then asked. You have been to the psychologist ward in the hospital before, right? Did you cure it later? Jamie smiled, and whispered secretly, I'll tell you, I was actually faking. The old man who teaches math in our school is very boring, and he also always asked me to answer questions every day, so I just pretended to be sick. I'm not really sick, you don't tell others ah. Uh. Claire. Dot. 
Chatterbox character would never be the nature of G. Rant's reincarnation, and this guy actually only pretended to be sick. Claire did not want to bother himself with this little madman anymore and turned away. Jamie chased after him, shouting, Hey, what is your name? Why are you looking for me? Why don't you say it clearly ah? Uh? Claire just walked faster and faster while rubbing his temple, feeling a headache coming. He finally found a probable target from hundreds of children with same birth as him, and as a result, this little guy was actually a mischievous fella pretending to be sick. Obviously the little boy's character was different from G. Ran, so to say, all of his previous hard work was in vain. Thinking of this, Claire could not help but feel depressed. In this case, I don't even know what year I can find him. By the time he got home, Claire finally saw that his communicator was lit up. Claire opened the communicator and the image of little Shi Wei immediately appeared in front of him. Shi Wei clearly had just come out of the shower, he was wearing pure white pajamas and his black hair was dripping wet past his ears. He sat on one of the high sofas in the palace, his short legs couldn't even reach the ground, looking particularly lovely as they dangled slightly over the edge. However this child, who looked so angelic, immediately exposed his true nature once he opened his mouth, Claire. Where have you been? You did not answer my calls, you didn't even come to the palace today to celebrate the birth of my brother. Your parents said you are reading at home, who are you lying to, dot. As an omega, his voice was actually louder than an alpha's. Claire rubbed his ear and explained, tonight, there are surely many people at the palace for the fourth prince's birthday banquet, I do not like noisy places, so I didn't go. Shi Wei said in agreement, that's true, there are so many people in the place today, your parents included. Say, your mom came to see my mother with your Omega brother today, it was my first time seeing your brother, he looks cute. What's his name again? He is called Kevin, four years old this year. Oh. Shi Wei nodded. He seemed to be particularly interested in painting. I gave him the set of painting tools I used to use. He was hiding in the lounge silently drawing today, and really, his drawing is much more attractive than yours. Suddenly remembering that previously he had drawn a painting of the two of them holding hands and then gave it to this little sweetheart of his, Claire felt extremely embarrassed. He quickly changed the topic, why were you looking for me? Shi Wei said with a smile, I just wanted to tell you that my brother was born. His name is Caesar, an alpha prince. When he grows up, if he needs help, you must help him for me. Claire did not expect Shi Wei to make this request, but he soon understood Shi Wei's intentions, Shi Wei is used to his role as a big brother in recent years. Since childhood he has always tried his best to look after his two little sisters, always giving them delicious foods, and leaving all his toys to Alicia and Shi Lin while he himself rarely ever touched those toys. The two princesses also loved to hang around him all day, calling him Wang Xiong, one. And now that his younger brother was born, Shi Wei began to worry about what would happen to Caesar once he grew up. This showed just how responsible a big brother he was. The sight of the little boy dangling his little short legs over the sofa while possessing a solemn and concerned look on his face regarding his brother's future made Claire unable to hold back his smile. He said, I know, I'll help him once he grows up. And how is your royal uncle anyway? He did not come today. Shi Wei answered, Wang Xu's baby will be born in a few days, the doctor said it is a boy, and although they still don't whether he will be an alpha, beta, or omega, his name has been prepared in advance. He will be called Brian, a bit similar with your name, too, right? Claire nodded and said, your uncle's son will be the same age as your brother Caesar, they can be companions. Shi Wei laughed, yes ah, uh, just like the two of us, it was nice to have a partner to play with when you were a kid. Have you ever played with me? Didn't you always push my head away every time I tried to take a look at those books you were reading? Claire held back the urge to curse at Shi Wei and said instead, I'm going to sleep first, good night. That night, Claire once again had a nightmare, he dreamed of the car accident from his previous life, of him hurriedly moving to his side the moment he discovered the large truck, rushing over to protect Ji Ran with his body, 
but also ended up witnessing G. Rant's bloody look at the same time. That scene was too shocking, and Claire was immediately awoke, soaked with sweats in the middle of the night. After waking up, he could not sleep anymore. Claire turned on his optical computer and looked over the information of the more than 100 children for the rest of the night. His initial inference was that if G. Ran was still alive, he was likely to have nightmares like him during his childhood, and should be diagnosed with schizophrenia by the hospital. Using this theory as a starting point, he found a child called Jamie. He thought that the child was probably G. Ran, but after seeing Jamie today, he realized that perhaps he had made a mistake from the beginning. Jamie's chatterbox character did not fit with G. Rant's nature, and besides, when he saw Jamie, he did not feel a shred of G. Rant's aura from him. From this point of view, his initial inference was wrong. It was more likely that as a child, G. Rant never received his memories in parts like he did, so he was never diagnosed as having schizophrenia, and never received treatment either. In other words, even if G. Ran lost all his memories after he was reincarnated, he may not have recalled them, therefore he did not need to go to the hospital for treatment. Or, G. Ran was reincarnated with all of his past memory intact, and in order to avoid being discovered, G. Ran continued to disguise himself. With G. Ran's cleverness and his genius.level acting, it would be very difficult for the people around him to find out that something was wrong. Both of these possibilities added a great level of difficulty to Claire's intention of finding him. In the case G. Rand did not have his memory, Claire could only use the man's character as his base for searching, but he himself wasn't familiar with G. Rand's character as a child, so it was simply a case of looking for a needle in the haystack. On the other hand, if G. Rand was reincarnated with his memory, the movie star's acting skill was superb, acting as a child would be so easy for him. For Claire to find him among hundreds of children would certainly be no easy task. Moreover, many of the born dot on dot the dot same dot day children lived in distant galaxies, Claire had no chance of reaching them. It was not until dawn that Claire turned off his optical computer and came to the dining room for breakfast with a splitting headache. General Byron was drinking milk there when he saw his son coming downstairs, he asked blankly, Claire, what did you do at Sam's house last night? Obviously, Jamie's mom recognized Claire and told her husband about the incident, and then Captain Sam informed General Byron about it. Claire had known his actions must be concealed from his father and immediately uttered a long dot thought up excuse, I heard that Captain Sam's son is my age and has good grades. So, I wanted to meet him and see if he can help me review my lessons. Byron frowned and said. Don't go visiting the members of Star Corps without permission. Claire immediately agreed, yes, father. Claire had almost forgotten about his barely thought dot out excuse when in the afternoon, Lord Byron unexpectedly invited battalion commander Sam and his son to his own home. Claire and Jamie are exactly the same age, and since it's the school's holiday, let's just leave the two children to review their lessons together, said General Byron. Sam naturally could not defy an order from the general and immediately pulled his son over to salute the general. The two children were then sent to study in the study room, and Jamie immediately bounced in front of Claire, your Claire. Are you also born on June 21, son of general? Too amazing. Don't worry, I'll protect you like my father protect yours. Is this study room yours? It's so big. What book is in this row? Have you read it? Claire. Help, I don't want to be stuck with this chatterbox, I much prefer staying with Shi Wei instead. Claire, who had been tortured for a day by Jamie's presence, suddenly missed the days he spent with Shi Wei, at least, Shi Wei would not be as annoying as this kid. Except for his habit of rubbing Claire's head, he actually got along quite well with Shi Wei's character. Proof read by Clepart T slash N. 1. Wang Xiong equals royal, older, brother. 2. Shi Wei was talking about the pinyin Claire's name is or Kaliar Brian's name is or Bulayan. Chapter 19 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Recognition, 3. This holiday, Shi Wei was very happy because he not only had a younger brother, Caesar, but also a cousin, Brian. 
The Queen Mother and Berg Wang Shu gave birth to two alpha boys one after another, and on this rare occasion, Wang Shu also brought his child to the palace for a short period of time. Shi Wei stayed with his family every day, feeling very relaxed and happy. Cousin Brian was an active child, his two little hands were always caught in some chaos. On one occasion, Shi Wei handed him a miniature mech toy, he seemed particularly interested in machine armor, just like Berg Wang Shu. Once he had the toy in his arms, he absolutely refused to let go. If someone dared to touch his toy, he would burst into tears, and Caesar, as if he didn't want to be outdone, would soon follow him in crying. As long as the two alphas were crying, they were louder than anyone else, and as soon as they met each other, they would start to growl and cry. Their cries were enough to make King Trent frown, and he refused to be near the Queen's palace. Even the captain of the royal guard, Craig, quietly escaped far away. This made Uncle Berg very annoyed, and in the end he simply took Brian back home. Only after this would Caesar finally quiet down and stay obediently in his mother's arms to drink nutritious milk. Queen Anna reluctantly looked at Shi Wei and said, Why is your brother always crying? You rarely cried when you were young. Shi Wei touched his brother's head and smiled, maybe it's because he is an alpha. Alphas are naturally strong, so from a young age he would also cry louder than others. Anna said, Claire is an alpha as well but he never cried when he used to play with you, instead he liked to hold you. Shi Wei's face turned a bit embarrassed and he could not help but say, Mother, when Claire and I were children, we still did not understand anything. Don't talk about it anymore please. Anna laughed, Fine, I will not talk about it. Shi Wei sat beside Caesar who was drinking milk, the second princess Alicia was painting quietly on the table, and the third princess Xii Lin was busy playing with her doll's hair. All four of her children were around, it was the happiest Queen Anna had been for some time. Unfortunately, Shi Wei soon had to go back to school. Queen Anna hated to part with him, but still, she prepared a lot of food for him to eat, and clothes for him to wear, all of it was stuffed into a few boxes of luggage. Shi Wei took the initiative to hug her and said, Mother, Rest assured, the school is safe and I have good relations with the students. I'll be back again on the next holiday. Anna nodded and touched her son's head gently, when you come back next time, you'll be one year older, and Caesar will have already learned to speak. Shi Wei said with a smile, yes, at that time, I'll get to listen to him calling me elder brother. He pinched little Caesar's face while speaking. Caesar grabbed his hand, put it into his mouth, and suck on it for a while, however, once he found out that it was not tasty, he let go of his brother's hand and turned to look for food. Shi Wei smiled, took his hand back and bowed respectfully to his mother, saying, Mother, I'll be going back to school now. Anna nodded, Yes. Take good care of yourself. Watching her son turned around to leave, Anna could not help but lose her good mood a little. Shi Wei rarely made her worry. He was obedient and sensible since a young age, and had also been taking care of his younger brother and sisters really well as their big brother. He was like the most intimate little protector of Queen Anna. St. Paul's Academy had an annual holiday policy, so she would not be able to see him again until next year. The next time we meet, how much more taller will he be? Although Caesar was the alpha prince that Anna had hoped for, the one with the biggest hold on her heart was her eldest son, Shi Wei. When she thought of Shi Wei having to be sent out of the palace and married to an alpha once he grew up, Anna felt an unwillingness brewing in her heart. Different from the warmth and joy that Shi Wei experienced with his family, Claire was in dire straits during the entire holiday. General Byron invited a tutor for him in order to improve his academic performance, and because Jamie and him were of the same age, he was also called by the general to come and attend classes with Claire. That chatterbox Beta always had something to say, and every day, the word, why, would hang in his mouth. It was giving Claire a headache, but fortunately, the time for them to go back to school soon came. The moment he saw Shi Wei in the dormitory, Claire felt a strange kind of fond feeling. Out of all of his peers, he felt the most relaxed when he was with Shi Wei. 
A small follower was following behind Shi Wei, naturally it was his roommate Aiden. Shi Wei helped Aiden to carry his luggage, both of them were talking and laughing all the way upstairs. Aiden's body was a lot better now that he had been nursed back to health during the holiday, and his face showed a ruddy complexion. Meanwhile, Shi Wei did not really change much. When he caught sight of Claire, he reached out and rubbed Claire's head, saying with a smile. Your hair is longer ah. Dot. I really want to beat him. Still rubbing my head, hasn't his rubbing addiction been cured? From the 35 children in the class, no one had to repeat the year, which made teacher Kelly very pleased. For all of these classmates to successfully pass the exam, Carlo's part in it was not small. He always seriously looked after the students during self.study class. If someone was sleeping or playing games secretly, he would come over and say to their faces, don't play anymore, exams will be here soon. Actually, many people in the class were particularly annoyed by him, and in private, there were also many of them who would criticize him for being too serious. However, Carlo still did what he thought he should do. In his mind, he recognized it as his responsibility as the class's president. Even though he was still small, he already had this, I am the most correct, strange self. Confidence. The school started officially the next day. Shi Wei discovered that the difficulty of the second grade course of St. Paul's Academy was similar to that of the fifth grade course in his previous life. Since the children of this future world started their education relatively early, the level of official education in the empire was also three years more advanced compared to Shi Wei's last life. Shi Wei had noticed that his classmates were obviously much more sensible now after they entered school than they were before. They did not change classrooms even after ascending to the second grade, but some of the teachers did change, and they also got one more course. The newly added course in second dot grade was called a fighting class. As soon as he heard the name, Shi Wei was instantly interested in this course. On Wednesday afternoon, the group of classmates were arranged to attend an afternoon fighting class. The sturdy teacher, Tony, brought all the students to a large classroom dedicated to the fighting class and showed everyone the sturdy muscles on his arm. He whispered, Do you know why there is no elevator in the students' dormitory building at St. Paul Academy? None of the children answered, Tony went on to say. It's to allow you to exercise more. You have to climb the stairs every day so that you won't develop the lazy childhood habit of flying directly into your room in three seconds. Teacher Tony's sight swept around his audience sternly, in this era of science and technology, to rely on high technology has become the inertia of human thinking. However, having a strong physique is also very important. If your body is not strong, you will rely on the robot every day and become too lazy to go do your own activities, etc., and once you are old, you can only lie in the hospital every day to replace your various necrotic organs. The purpose of my fighting class is to let you develop a habit of training since childhood. Training will lead you to build a strong physique, which is good for you. Did you hear that? Everyone said, I heard it. Tony frowned, have you not eaten yet? Louder. The crowd shouted in unison, I heard. Tony nodded in satisfaction, then suddenly asked, Yes, your class seems to have two omegas right. Student Aiden has poor health, your class teacher has told me that he does not need to do this class. The other omega, stand up. The teacher was forthright in character and his voice was loud. While holding his almost deafened ears, Shi Wei stood up calmly, It's me. Tony teacher waved his hand, you are an omega. Then you can go to rest. Shi Wei refused, teacher, I am in good health, I can attend this class. Tony said, you do not need a lesson in fighting, as an omega, learning this is unnecessary for you. When you grow up, you'll just have to learn how to take care of your children. Hearing this, many of the students were laughing, but Shi Wei ignored them, there was no rule that said an Omega could not attend this class. Physique is also very important to an Omega, only in good health will one be able to take good care of their Alpha in the future, isn't that true? Seems a bit reasonable. But what is this about taking care of Alphas? 
The group of Alpha students stared at Shi Wei, feeling a weird feeling in their heart. Teacher Tony was also startled. He had taught in so many classes and usually, most Omegas who heard that they could skip this class would feel very happy to sit aside and watch. Of course, there were some who were interested in the fighting class, but they were only able to persevere for a few days. These kind of Omegas had quite a big courage. Tony frowned, well, since you want to learn, then follow everyone to learn. If you cannot stand the pain, you can always go to rest aside. Shi Wei smiled, yes, teacher. In fighting class, as the name suggested, the teacher would teach you some fighting skills so that the children could protect themselves when faced with a critical moment. Besides, this kind of fighting skill might also come in handy when operating the smart machine armor in the future. The alphas and betas in the class were obviously very much interested in the combat class. Everyone put on loose white clothes with a light yellow band around their waist, and stood in a row with their hands behind, listening with serious attention. Teacher Tony said, this band on the waist will reflect your fighting skills. Once you reach an appropriate level, you can participate in the martial arts examinations, and it will be upgraded if you pass it. Now, the light yellow strap you use is the lowest level of entry. Level up. Upwards, there are red belt, blue belt, green belt, and the highest level is the black belt. While talking, the man tied a black belt around his waist. He looked tall and burly, and his exposed arms muscles gained envious looks from the children. Listening to his explanation, Shi Wei privately thought that the Imperial Fighting Techniques upgrade system seemed similar to the karate he had studied before, with black belt being the highest level. He met a karate master who accepted him as a disciple by chance in the past life, and after intense training, he advanced to black belt when he had yet to reach 18 years old. However, in the past life he was an orphan who grew up in a muddy pile after all. He fell and bumped into many obstacles numerous times which molded his body foundation to be really good. On the other hand, Shi Wei was an omega in this life. He also had always been pampered in the palace, so his current body certainly was not as strong as Ji Rance. Shi Wei did not feel worried about it though, body condition could be gradually improved by doing exercises, moreover, he still remembered those fighting skills. He believed that it would not be too difficult for him to learn it again. After introductioning the rules in the fighting class, teacher Tony issued the first instruction. Okay, now I will teach you the first action, follow my movement. He taught the most basic action in fighting techniques. Parallel stance and then straight punching. Stand side by side, head up, put out your chest, stand firmly on the ground. Close four of your right hand's fingers together, then put your thumb on top of the index finger and gently clenched it. The strength of your fist should be focused in the place where your index and middle fingers meet your palm. Note that your wrist should be relaxed, it will give more strength to your palm and will not sprain your wrist. Tony finished explaining, then looked at the children, saying, I'll give you a demonstration. Ha! With a loud shout, teacher Tony did a standard straight punch at the front of the sandbag hard. A bang sound was soon heard, and the heavy sandbag actually moved a meter away from him. One can imagine, if his punch hit someone's nose, it must have been smashed and fractured. The children were shocked and looked up at him in admiration. Tony took back his hand, smiled and said, come on, everyone follows me. He clapped his hands and dozens of sandbags magically fell down from the classroom's ceiling, with one hanging in front of each of them. The sandbags used by the students were only one dot third the size of the one Tony had before, and were lighter in weight. Stand in front of the sandbag. Once I have counted one, two, and three, shout aloud and release the energy from your body. One, two, three, ha. The children punched following the teacher's example, and the sandbags in the classroom were suddenly pushed around. Some children's hands were hurt after hitting those sandbags, and they looked about to cry. Meanwhile, at this moment Claire stood frozen in place, because, he just saw a very familiar figure. Standing in a textbook-like striking stance, his body leaning forward as he punched with arm full of power, 
throwing punch after punch onto the sandbags without delay. His movement was simple and neat, like a dormant beast in the forest. Once he encountered a crisis, he would be as unstoppable as a tiger. G ran. Once upon a time, he had seen this natural punching practice numerous times in the apartment where the two of them lived together. This beautiful, smooth move which compelled other people to lock their gazes on it. Today, he actually saw this action again. Although the movement was limited due to height, but that decisive simple punching posture was exactly the same as G. Rance. During this moment, while the students were frowning because of their hurting hands, a punched sandbags was suddenly hit until it moved one meter away. The culprit was the childhood friend standing beside Claire. The first prince she way. Proof. Read by. Clepart. Chapter 20 You are listening at novelfull.audio. Recognition, 4. At that moment, Claire's body wasn't the only one that had turned stiff, many students around them were also standing frozen, staring at the sandbag that was hit until one meter away by the Omega. His first time and he already could punch the sandbag like that. Even a lot of strong alphas were not necessarily able to do that, and he was an Omega. How is it possible? Carlo also looked back at Shi Wei in astonishment, he could not believe that Shi Wei was actually able to do this. Is he really not an Alpha who was mistakenly identified as an Omega? Otherwise, how could there be such strength from him? Shi Wei also realized that he had made a serious mistake after punching out. Probably because in his past life he liked doing various martial arts and often practiced boxing at home, when he looked at the familiar sandbag in front of him, all he could feel was a thrilling sensation, like his blood was boiling. His body felt like a string of arrows, so when teacher Tony loudly shouted out one, two, three, he instinctively threw a punch following moves from his memory. It was so natural for him, almost as if he routinely trained this every morning. This was a fatal mistake, because at that moment he forgot he was an Omega and about his disguise. Truthfully, the most instinctive actions were what one would find most harder to hide. When one did not want to show their expression, they could bow their heads, if one were afraid their expression would be leaked through their eyes, they could just close their eyes. However, the instinctive reaction at a critical moment was a condition buried deeply in one's mind. There was no way to deliberately disguise a conditioned reflex. With Shi Wei's own physical fitness, it was simply impossible for him to punch a sandbag until it moved one meter away. However he had all of G. Rant's memory in his mind, the guy who achieved black belt at the age of 18, and had the professional textbook. Perfect Postures His mentor in the past life once told him that fighting was not only about using brute force, but also needed skills. With a flexible body, even someone who had a short stature could beat a tall brawny guy. Shi Wei's strength was not as good as Alpha's, but his skill was absolutely perfect, the perfection was almost shoulder to shoulder with Tony. Still in surprise, teacher Tony came forward with a serious look and asked. How did you do this Shi Wei? Shi Wei immediately adjusted his expression, scratched his head innocently, smiled and answered. Teacher, I don't know. I think this bag has a problem, just when I was about to punch, the rope seemed to be loose. I'll try it again. Is it? Tony looked at him with a puzzled look and checked the sandbag sling and said, you try again. Okay. Shi Wei clenched his fist and punched the sandbag in front of him, but this time when his fist was about to hit the sandbag, he deliberately reined his force. The sandbag shook really gently, like it was being tickled. Shi Wei frowned at his red fist and put on a painful look. The surrounding alphas breathed a sigh of relief and couldn't help but whisper. Sure enough, the rope was loose, that's why the sandbag drifted away by itself. Yes, how could an Omega hit such a heavy sandbag? What, that really scared me. Shi Wei's explanation was reasonable, so teacher Tony did not examine it carefully. He was very convinced of Shi Wei's assertion that he subconsciously thought that it was impossible for an Omega to do that. Soon, he let go of Shi Wei's matter and returned to the front to continue his lecture. Shi Wei, who was thrilled to get away from his slip, 
secretly sighed, but what he failed to notice was a pair of eyes which had been watching him from the side with a complicated look. Standing next to him, Claire was of course aware of Shi Wei's abnormal action, Shi Wei punches were very decisive, simply as natural as Ji Ran's. If this reasoning was established, then Ji Ran had just reacted to his own mistake, and immediately cleverly figured out ways to make up for it. Using superb acting, he was able to cover it up from teacher Tony and the small children around them. But he could not hide from Claire. After all, they had gotten a long day and night for many years, and once he had lived together with Ji Ran as Yu Qianha. Every day he witnessed him practicing karate, he was very familiar with each of his movements. For the rookie first prince Shi Wei who had never learned fighting skills to be able to do perfect postures on the first day of class that IT really did not make sense. Unless he actually had Ji Ran's memory. His punching motion before was obviously Ji Ran's most used karate hand dot type punch. During the entire fighting class, Claire was in turmoil. He had been secretly observing Shi Wei's action, but unfortunately, the decisive punch from before never appeared again. It was as if the previous scene was a mere short dot lived illusion of his. After Tony left, Shi Wei's every punch came out soft. Not to mention moving the sandbag, he would also frown and rub his hand from time to time, putting on a, my fist hurts, expression. Claire believed he definitely did not make a mistake, and Shi Wei was actually fine. However, Claire kept his composure, he could not directly run to Shi Wei and ask, you are Ji Ran, right? In case he was wrong, it would be bad if Shi Wei knew that he had complete memories of his past life. So, he must look for some other evidence before confirming. Claire was looking for the right time to confirm his guess with Shi Wei, but unexpectedly, the opportunity took the initiative to find him itself. At about half past ten that night, the sky was already dark and some dormitories had already turned off their lights. When he had estimated that Shi Wei's roommate Aiden had also fallen asleep, Claire sent a message to Shi Wei saying, Shi Wei, I'm waiting for you at the five. Star Fruit Forest Behind the School's Dormitory I want to tell you something, so come if you find it convenient. Shi Wei received this message and thought that Claire must have had a nightmare and wanted to talk to him about it. He put on his clothes and went to the forest behind the dormitory's buildings. Five Dot Star Fruit Forest was still very beautiful, the silver dot white leaves were shining brightly and made this place look like daytime. Unexpectedly, Shi Wei did not see Claire, but found two senior boys chatting there instead. The two of them seemed to be talking about about some relevant knowledge of Omegas that they had just learned in the physiological class. When they saw the cute little Shi Wei approaching the place, they immediately stopped talking and shared meaningful glances. One of them asked with a smile, Junior brother, how old are you? What are you doing here? Shi Wei answered, Sophomore, I'm here to find someone. After saying this, he turned to go, but his arm was caught by one of the boys. The boy squatted down, smiled, and said, You look so cute, must be an Omega. Shi Wei was annoyed to death. The smiles on those boys' faces were making him nauseous, and the tone they used when asking him about, must be an Omega, was like that of a pervert. After asking, the boy actually stretched out his hands to pinch little Shi Wei's face while saying, Oh, don't be afraid, I will come to protect you later. Shi Wei Dot. In school, higher grade students bullying their juniors was common occurrence, however, Shi Wei absolutely could not tolerate bullying. The moment he saw the boy stretched out his hand to touch his face, Shi Wei's eyes turned cold. He accurately caught the boy's approaching wrist, and reverse dot twisted it. Ah. Ah. The sound of bone's dislocation along with an ear dot piercing scream was soon heard. That boy's wrist joint was unloaded by Shi Wei. The other boy who witnessed Shi Wei dislocating his companion's wrist stood there in a daze for a moment before suddenly reacting. He stepped forward and reached out to grab Shi Wei, however Shi Wei hurriedly squatted sideways and deftly avoided his movements, then he righted his stance, successfully stabilizing his body. 
Shi Wei clenched his hand into a fist and landed a decisive punch on the boy's waist, while his left foot hit the boy's armpit at the same time. Before the boy had the chance to react to what was going on, Shi Wei had already put him to the ground. The two upper dot graders glanced at each other, then looked at Shi Wei in horror as if they were facing a big monster. Shi Wei just clapped his hands, smiled and said, Don't think that it's an Omega bullying you, I'm actually an Alpha, one who is a hundred times stronger than you. My spiritual innate power is more than 122, afraid yet. The two boys, dot. Shi Wei said coldly, Get lost. The two students ran like hell. Shi Wei rubbed his wrist and thought depressingly, that punch just now that my height is too short, so there are many restrictions. If I was using the adult version's body of Shi Wei, who would dare to bully me? If that was the case, he was sure that he would even able to dislocate the whole bones on their bodies. Shi Wei put down his hand and started walking around, yet he still did not find any traces of Claire. Little did he know, at this time Claire was hiding in the back of a tree, his hands firmly clenched. It is Ji Ran. Absolutely Ji Ran. Shi Wei's posture when he threw that punch just now, it was Shi Wei's favorite move for middle dot high attack. This move was very similar with straight punching, however when he made the fist, he would deliberately highlight his middle finger a little upright in the clenching fist before clamping it along the other fingers. The focus of this move was the knuckle of that middle finger. It might seem like an ordinary punch at first, but the protruding middle finger knuckle would jab at the victim's body and the sharpness would make them feel extremely painful. Shi Wei had used this punching move to strike the other boy's soft waist before. Then, while taking advantage of the boy's painful feeling, he decisively kicked his armpit, making Shi Wei able to easily bring him to the ground. Ji Ran's character had always been the same, he did not like to drag things out. He always used the simplest and easiest way to subdue his opponent. Those shrimps were not even a match for him at all, therefore he did not have to waste time on them. Even if those punches in today's fighting class could be seen as a coincidence, then how about the fight with two enemies in the forest this evening? Those boys were more than a head taller than Shi Wei, and yet he was still able to beat them calmly. It was absolutely impossible to be a mere coincidence. Claire heard the violent beating of his own heart. As a child, Shi Wei rarely played with children's toys. It was because Shi Wei had Ji Rant's memory, so he did not like those naive things. When Claire was a kid, he used to ask Shi Wei what book he was reading, and the boy always pushed at his head while saying, it's a book that you won't understand. Turned out, he was not joking back then. Unlike Claire, Shi Wei had Ji Rant's memory, so he could understand things much more than children his age. He was also born on June 21, just five minutes later than Claire himself. From an early age, he had shown signs of being sensible and smarter than other children, and he has the same tenacious and unyielding character as an alpha. With all of these clues together, there could only be one conclusion for this. The first prince Shi Wei was the one who he had been looking for. Ji Ran. At that moment, Claire suddenly had an urge to laugh at himself. Great. Finally found him. He had been looking for so long, checked so much useless information, yet all of it only led him to feel frustrated, disappointed, and dazed. However, he never thought that the one he wanted to find, Ji Ran, was right in front of him. All along, he was always by his side, born together with him, grew up together, and walked in this strange world together for these six years. Suddenly he remembered a poem. Looking through the thousand faces in the crowd but not seeing you, in dejection I turned around, there you are, waiting behind me all this while under the dim light. Ji Ran, fortunately you are still alive. It's really fortunate that I finally found you in the crowd. Claire took a deep breath and walked step by step toward Shi Wei's small figure. When the other boy finally spotted him, Claire looked at him gently, smiled, and said, Xiao Ran, do you still remember a movie named Trouble Time? Proof. Read by Clipart T. N. I don't know anything about karate, 
so please pardon my butchered explanation here I hope you can still imagine those mentioned moves though lol also, if you want to join a Dan May Haven filled with Fujos and Fudens, feel free to join us here. HTTPS forward slash forward slash discord dot gg slash 6nnrn3b